Good morning, friends. I changed my YouTube channel name. So when I was toying with the idea of changing my name, my first thought was to change it to my actual name, Jen Rogers. But when I did a quick YouTube search, there was already a user or two with that name. And so I just kind of gave up on that idea. But I actually just hit edit to see if I could. And because my YouTube account is linked to my Google Plus account, um, Google Plus let me change my account to my actual name, which then changed my YouTube name. So yeah, from now on, this channel will be Jen Rogers instead of Jen and Brandon Rogers. So thank you guys for your input. So another story time for you guys. Um, this morning, I woke up to someone mentioning me in an Instagram post where they saw my photo. And this post was on some, sty some hairstylist Instagram. And my immediate reaction when I saw this was I felt really hurt because, well, for one, it was a painful experience for me. And two, you know, this photo was used without my permission. And thank God for this lovely girl who happened to see this photo and then she shared it with me. So earlier this year, I went to a salon to get ombre done. And if you guys watched my ombre from hell video, it's actually my most popular video on this channel. Um, you guys will see that, you know, I, I kind of told my story there where I went to the salon, I was prepared with pictures, and um, yeah, he was just really confident about what he could do, and I fully trusted him. The reason I even shared that experience is because, I guess, um, for a few reasons. One is, I wanted, if someone happened to have an experience similar to mine, I didn't want them to feel alone. And another reason was I wanted to encourage people to really do some research before going to a salon and getting a hair dyed job like that. I think I just assumed that all stylists would know how to do ombre because it's so trendy and you know, I just, I just assumed it was my assumption. But actually it seems like it's a lot harder than one would imagine. I messaged the hairstylist, the Instagram that I saw that post, and I asked her like, hey, you know, would you mind taking this photo down from your Instagram because this was actually a pretty painful experience for me. And it wasn't that I was trying to cut corners and save money or, you know, I wish I could say that I bought the dye and did it myself and that's why I botched it. It was really nice because sh shortly after she private messaged me and she really apologized and said, hey, you know, I'm so sorry. Um, I just wanted to put up a random post and um, I didn't realize that there was a person behind this photo. And she really apologized for unintentionally hurting me. Um, I wrote back to her and like, I even browsed her Instagram and she's she's good at what she does like the ombre jobs that she shared they look really nice and so i just told her like hey i wish i was lucky enough that i had a hair hairstylist like you from the very beginning i just wanted to share that pleasant exchange i think what could have been something ugly um turned out to be something pleasant. What I also didn't mention in that video because it happened after I'd posted my ombre from hell experience. I went to a different salon and I got my hair fixed. And after my fixed hair, I went back to the first salon and I sat down with the owner and I told her like, hey, um, this is what my hair should have looked like. And I told the owner that when I went to the second place to fix my hair, my hair was so damaged from the bleaching that he did that I had to go through two rounds of treatment and then um, the hairstylist at the second salon had to do the ombre once and then wash it out and it still was looking a little funky so she had to dye it again so my hair went through like three or four bleachings in a day so I mean I don't know if you guys can really tell right now but my hair is in pretty bad condition, even though this was months ago. Yeah, so I sat down with the owner and I asked her to reimburse me for the treatments I had to pay for and the difference in cost. So the first place charged me 150 and the second place I think was 250. 
So I would have originally paid for 150 had they done it correctly the first time, but because I had to pay for the treatments, which was another 200 and for the, the difference of 100 I asked her to reimburse me for um, the extra 300 that I had to pay, and she did. Instead of compensating me with money, her first suggestion was, hey, why don't you just come back to our salon and for, you know, for as long as you want, we'll give you free service. We'll dye your hair, cut your hair. And I was just like, I'm sorry, but I will never let anyone in this salon put their hands on my hair. And I try to say it in the nicest way possible. But um, at the end, she gave me what I wanted and I didn't like bash her salon or anything. So that's that. Someone asked me to talk about my eyeliner tattoo experience because while I have um, a video about my eyebrow tattoo experience I never shared my eyeliner tattoo experience and the reason I shared my eyebrow tattoo experience is because that was something I was uh, doing regularly as in I was going back for frequent touch-ups but my eyeliner tattoo after my first um, after the first job and the first initial touch-up, I never went back for it because it was so painful, you guys. It was probably one of the most pain physically painful things I've done. They, she, the tattoo artist did use numbing cream, but even so, oh my gosh, it felt like it, it's probably the closest thing that I would I felt to being stabbed in the eye, like. The skin around there obviously is very sensitive and I just remember even with the numbing cream and even while I was lying there, um, every time she went in, like I was just tearing. It was just like, duke, duke, duke. I'm lying there with like tears streaming down my face and just like clenching my fists and waiting for it to be over and my eyelids were kind of swollen and so that was the actual experience. And the one thing that I'm not the happiest about is if you guys look closely, the tail on this one is actually, it extends longer than this one. And it really bothers me that this is uneven. So, I mean, when I draw my wing, obviously, or when I put on mascara, you can't tell a lot, but I'm a very detail-oriented person. So when I look in the mirror, it's like, <clears throat> do I regret doing it? No. I actually like it in the sense that I normally don't wear eyeliner on my whole eye. Like even before the eye, eyeliner tattoo, I only used to draw the wings at the end because yes, I have monolids, but at the same time, I have this tiny fold. And no matter how thin or thick my eyeliner is, when I open my eyes, even after it's dried, it still smudges on my eyelids. And it's something I didn't want to like touch up throughout the day because I used to carry around eyeliner and then fix it when it's smudged in. Like I said, I like to stay low maintenance. Maybe in a year after it fades way more, <laughs> maybe by then I would have forgotten the pain and I'll be like, yeah, let's go, let's do it again. But until then, and actually this is, it's hitting a year now and it hasn't faded at all, so. That is my experience. I hope that was helpful. I was hoping that Brandon would be home this morning so he can say hello to you guys because it is Saturday and he doesn't work on Saturdays. But this morning he left pretty early because he is attending a CrossFit um, seminar sort of thing. And I'm getting ready because at 1.30 today I'm attending a YouTube Creator Lab event. And in this event, I forget exactly what the topics are about today. It's a three-part event, so today is the final, the final session. And it's cool because the presenters, they teach you tips on how to grow your channel and connect with your audience. And I love connecting with you guys. And if there's something else I need to learn from YouTube itself, I'm there. <laughs> Yeah, I was lucky enough to be invited, like one of the reps reached out to me and told me like, hey, it looks like your channel's going well, you know, would you be interested in coming out to listen to these presentations? And I said, yeah, 
Okay, I didn't say yeah like that, but inside. Inside, I was like, yeah, yeah, I want to go, I want to go. And my friend Esther is actually attending with me, so I'm excited. She's going with me for moral support. And I say moral support because the presentations, and I think most of the YouTubers, they're all Korean, and all the presentations are in Korean. And so, you know, I don't have any problems communicating in English, but it is intimidating to sit at a table and there are different activities that we do during the presentations where we have to talk and like share stuff about our channel and like my Korean's not great guys so I kind of feel like an idiot when I have to speak in Korean but I mean the last group of people I met they were so nice they were like oh my gosh you lived in the states for 20 years um your Korean's great you know, even at your level, like I think if you were to make a YouTube video in Korean, um, people would understand if you just maybe threw up English subtitles, if I wanted to reach a wider audience. But I'm, I'm still struggling with speaking in English because, <laughs> you know, I stumble over my words a lot, even in my videos now. So maybe the talking in Korean thing will have to happen much later and then after the youtube event esther and i are going to meet up with brandon to have dinner in gangnam i'm really craving some spicy jimdak and jimdak is like braised chicken and there's this one place in gangnam that i really like so i'm hoping we can go there tonight so last night i had a great time with gail we hung out with her kids and we had some food and some drinks and so Gail is obsessed with pirate's booty white cheddar pirate's booty and I brought back a big bag for her and I didn't want her to share it with anyone because I know how much she loves it but she was kind enough to open it while I was there and we started snacking on it while we had a beer and then all the kids came over and they were like can I have some can I have some and then Chad came home later and then he tried to sneak some into his mouth and there was a cute little wrestling match, not really, not, they didn't really wrestle but she tried to put the bag away and he like grabbed for it when she wasn't looking and he dug into it and <laughs> it was funny. I'm so thirsty. I'm drinking water guys, I'm drinking water. No kidney stones. If I'm honest with you, I wish I could just get a cat eye tattoo. But something tells me I might regret it. So... I just gotta do it every day. Not every day. I don't do this every day. So what are you guys doing this weekend? I hope none of you are working. Because weekends are precious. Oh shoot. Today's Saturday, huh? Saturdays are the days that I order groceries. And I have to order it today so that they can be delivered hopefully tomorrow or Monday at the latest. I don't think we have anything in our fridge right now. Do you guys like cooking? That is another thing that I struggle with. It's not something I naturally enjoy and I just rotate like the three or four things I know how to make which is really boring, it's just chicken breast, some vegetable, and Brandon's being good, he gets an avocado, <laughs> I don't know. I think eating clean is kind of hard in Korea if you're trying to cook um, at home because vegetables and fruit are quite expensive and if you're trying to buy organic, oh my gosh, forget about it. You can buy a head of cauliflower. I'm not even kidding you. Maybe it's like this big, like about that size, and it can cost you like 11 bucks. And it's like, what the heck? That's not even enough to feed one of us. So one of my favorite thing these days, I'm not sure if I voiced it here, but I love waking up to your comments on this morning chat series. I love connecting with you guys. I love when you guys tell me about stuff that I ask you about, like, some of you shared your fitness journey and so happy to know that I'm not alone in the struggle, you know? 
this can continue to be you know a safe place for all of us to just share what's going on without judgment because judgment sucks i'm finished i hope you guys are having a relaxing weekend let me know what you're up to and i will see you tomorrow morning bye